Happy Sunday. Once again, for the privilege of coming and sharing God's word, uh, just bringing a word of encouragement. The word of God today, we labor, but God builds. None of you plans for failure. I mean, if you're planning hard to fail, you don't. And I want to read this scripture in the easy version. I didn't realize it was an easy translation of the Bible. We all need an easy translation of the Bible. So, yes, may the Lord our God bless us. May everything that we do go well. Yes, may everything go well. I believe God wants to bless us with success. Amen. He wants each one of us to succeed. You know, there's a saying, you may not have had a good start, but you can have a good finish in Jesus' name. That was a good place to say amen. It's not how you start, but how you finish that matters. Isn't that right? You could have had a poor start, but how you finish is more important at the end of the day. Let me encourage you on how you can succeed. God wants to bless us. I know that. I live in the blessings of God every day. When Barney was praying, she prayed for many things that contributes to our success. The beautiful weather, the beautiful day, the provision and all that. So God wants to bless us. Only thing we've forgotten sometimes. Isn't it right? Psalms 127 verse 1. The one that we read was, Unless the Lord builds a house, the lay, builders labor in vain. I like the next uh, rendition. It's in the easy to read version. If it, it, if it is not the Lord who builds a house, the builders are wasting their time. Do you like wasting your time? No. Let God build. And NLT says, uh, unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. I love those other translations just telling us that if, unless God is building in our lives, our efforts are probably a waste of time. You know, as long as we live, we're all building. We're building a house, we're building a home, we're building a business, building a family, building a relationship. We're always building. I mean, maybe most of you are at the latter end of life and you probably stop building, but some or the other, you're building. You build an appetite, I think. Let me give you a couple of points on how to have success or failure when building. One of the points I want to talk about, and it's this, these are my thoughts, uh, dependency. It is a situation in which you need something or someone and are unable to continue normally without them. We, we are dependent on the person. God works and you fold your hand. You pray and say, God, I got to do, I want this. God, I want to do that. God, I want this. I want that. And But you're always folding your hand. Uh, if you look at the scripture, and I want to just explain that to you. All scripture is inspired by God. It's useful to teach us what is true and what makes us realize 
what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. That's what scripture does. When we read our Bibles or when we hear the word of God, that's the purpose. It helps us to uh, be corrected and do what is right. So it says that, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. I believe as long as I'm on earth, I've got a job to do. Amen. We're called workers, not shirkers, neither jerkers. Every believer is a worker. But sometimes God works and we fold our hand. God, you do this. God, you do that. God, you do this. God, you do that. And all you do, you fold your hands. You know, friends, we cannot just fold our hands and let God do the work. I believe there are three keynote principles in addition to prayer that we have got to honor. All of us. This is for every disciple. You can see there three keynote principles for every disciple. We've got to honor God's word. In simple terms, we've got to believe what it says, not just by reading it, but by doing it. Right? We've got to honor God's Sabbath, which is today. You know, I, I'm not talking about Saturday here. Yeah? But we've got to honor God's Sabbath. We've got to honor the Lord's day. So many people are seeing, I, I, I see a lot of people. They want God to bless them, but they just fold their hands. They just fold their hands. They think God will bless them because they fold their hands. I'm not underestimating the grace of God and His provision. And I know He blesses us. But there are times when we got to do a bit of work as well. We have to honor God's tithe. In your case, it's the offering. Too many times, many of us as disciples give God the leftovers. How about giving Him our first? How about seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness? Ah, as a pastor, I know I see people when they're blessed. And I'm not a judgment, it's an observation. When they're blessed, and they're, it always tells me they themselves are very generous people. They're generous with the words. They're generous in their actions. They're generous with their giving. So we've got to do those keynote principles in, in, in addition to prayer to be a good disciple. God called us to work like the scripture I just said. God made us all do work. We can't just fold our hands and expect just God to do all the work. We need to pray. We need to honor his word. We need to honor his day, the Lord's day. We need to honor our God with our offerings and also our generosity. So point number one was dependency. Point number two is also very interesting. Anybody want to guess what it is? Anybody want to help me preach? Oh, I just didn't want to help me. You had your moment. Independency. Independence means the state of wanting or being able to do things for yourself and make your own decisions without help or influence from other people. You know of somebody like that? They don't want any help. Not in a, in a, in a good way, but in a bad way. They don't want you because... They don't want any credit for the work they're going to do and they, for the success they're going to have. They are independent. How do we describe that in my analogy of folding our hands? I believe that is when I work and God folds his hands. Amazing. That happens a, t a lot of times. You do all the work and God folds his hand. Why? Why does God fold his hand? When you work, I think the answer is found in the next scripture. Matthew 7 21 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then the Master will say, Plainly, I never knew you. Away from me. You evil doers. That's tough words for doing things that are in the kingdom and God saying, Go away, you evil doers. You know, God tells the people, although they did great things, He doesn't know them because He was folding His hands. Why was that? Because they did everything in their own strength. They didn't even ask God, Is this what you want me to do? Maybe sometimes we all do that. We do things that we think God wants us to do, but you never ask the master if that's the thing you want him, that he wanted you to do. We do everything in our own strength. Simply put, you do things that God has, hasn't asked you to do. That's when you labor and God folds his hand. Maybe I can spare you a lot of pain here, friend. I've done that so often as a pastor. Barney always tells me, has God asked you to do that? 
I'll say, well, I didn't hear the audible, audible voice of God. But over a period of time, I learned not to do that. I've learned not to uh, get bogged down with things that don't bother me or I haven't been told or commissioned to do. And let that be an encouragement, not a criticism to any one of you. Don't do things when you do things in your own strength and expect God's, God to bless you and, you and you wonder why you're empty inside, why you're frustrated. Because when God gives you a commission, He always gives you the resources. Amen. You, haven't, you do things that God hasn't uh, asked you to do. Proverbs 16.3 says, Commit your plans, actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Basically saying, if you want to do something, pass it by God. Let God know. Say, God, don't fold your hands on me. You help me. You anoint this, what I'm doing. And the last point is, anybody knows? Well, I'll help you. Interdependency is a situation where you depend on each other. In this case, us to God. All living things are interdependent. Amen. I like how the service runs here. So many of you were involved in the program. It wasn't a one man show, one, in your case, one woman show. It was everybody got involved. And that's how God body in the God's house operates. Interdependency, it's uh, when you work and God builds, and the best part of it is nobody is folding their hands. You are laboring, God is building. God is building, you are laboring. There's interdependency. You're doing exactly what He commissioned you to do. You are not independent, you are not over dependent, you are interdependent. And we find that. Uh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3 9 it says for we are co-workers in God's service what are we co-workers there's no free lunches there uh, friends we are all co-workers I understand as you grow older there's limited energy and to do things it's just harder but we still can work the working as doesn't stop until he calls us home I, I suggest we are co-workers in God's service Amen. How many of you love that? We are co-workers. You are God's field, God's building. I think Jesus sets a perfect example in the next scripture. It says, so Jesus explained, I tell you the truth. The son of man can do, the son can do nothing by himself. He does only what he sees the father doing. Whatever the father does, the son also does. There's great success when you do what the Lord has commissioned you to do. Don't let your labor be where you are working and God folds his hand. Or don't let your labor be where God is working and you fold your hand. But let your labor be where both of you are in sync with each other. God has commissioned you. You are laboring. He's building. And Jesus gives us the formula for success or failure in our labor. And we read that scripture. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it, is wise like a person who builds a house on solid rock though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house it won't collapse because it is built on bedrock but anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish like a person who builds a house on sand where the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house it will collapse uh, with a mighty crash anyone knows that when we're building we will gain success when we do what the lord has said let me challenge you as i close and uh, and if you agree with my challenge maybe you should say i will and that's your part of the sermon so today will you promise to honor his word his sabbath and his tithe say i will Amen. sounds like a marriage ceremony isn't it <laughs> will you commit to let him build and you as a co-worker labor with him i will will you build your house upon the rock jesus christ i will you know i tell you this for a fact if you answer yes to all of them i guarantee you that you will have everlasting success let's recap again when you labor and god labors no one's folding their hands when 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 you labor and, and, and God is not uh, in a part of it. He's folding his hands. And then when God, uh, when, when God gives you success, you have to labor with God. Otherwise, you find that you are folding your hands and God is only working 
today, friend, be interdependent with God. Don't go off on your own. Don't be just dependent on God. Lord, I depend on you and don't do nothing. But rather, and don't be independent where you do everything and God does nothing because it's not sanctioned by Him. But be interdependent with God and then I guarantee you will succeed. As the title said, we labor but God builds. Do you receive His word today? Amen.